So I'm here with Corey from CR3. He's a photographer. And today I want to talk to you a little bit about f um, product photography and some of the do's and don'ts and what people are doing with photography with their products. So Corey, take wine for instance. What's some of the things you're seeing, some of the trends you're seeing, and some of the do's and don'ts people are doing with their photography and their products? There's a few different things with wine can be quite tricky because you've got a huge amount of reflections. You can see here with the curved shape, the dark glass, that it's going to reflect everything around it. So we don't have it completely set up here, but normally we would use um, flags and cards to box this out. And then we create reflected light onto the bottle to give really nice, clean reflections. A lot of times when you see uh, wine bottles, they've got really harsh light reflections on them. And while that can look okay, to get those really nice, the soft gradient is actually done in camera with what we call flags. And flags are some things to block out light, to let light through, to control the light, how it bounces around? Yeah, so we don't yeah. want light directly hitting the bottle. We want it to, we'll bounce light off um, a card um, and then that gives us the nice gradient yeah. on the bottle. And then we'll generally focus stack that with a macro lens, like here, so that we can get all the detail and the texture in the label. So you're taking like several exposures, several shots, and blending them all together at different yeah, different Correct. focuses so you can get it all really nice and high, high resolution. Yeah, really nice and sharp. Otherwise, with a macro lens shooting like this, you need to shoot at a really high f-stop, which is, can be okay as well if you want to just um, chew through them. To get the really high-end images, we will focus stack them to get the distance in focus from here to here and then right the way through the, the cap. So I can see there's lots of lights here. Just explain to us what, why you need so many lights in there here. The thing with the wine bottle is generally you're going to have light either side, which is what creates the highlights and the depth to the bottle. We will generally try and feather those out with the gradient using flags like we talked about. And then basically we just keep adding lights in to light the bottle, light the label. We don't want it all lit in the same way. We might use like snoots to create highlights like here and up the top on the edges. We might sort of we use a flag on top to bounce some light directly on top to create to some of the detail here or to create in the label. It changes when you're shooting uh, white or rosé or, or clear bottles. Clear bottles because yeah, that's, right, yeah. that's a whole different lighting setup and quite different to this yeah. again because you will generally, if you just flood it with light, you actually can't see what's inside it. That's so right, you need to yeah, backlight it. Because people want to see the colour of the, the fluid. Give me some examples of, you know, what good good photography will come out like in the end. The most important thing for me is generally with wine, a lot of work and time has gone into a label um, and that can be the texture on the label, the printing, the colors. The metals. Um, metals, mm -hmm. yeah. And so we really want to bring out all of that in a very high resolution image as well as this and the, and the caps as well. Quite often we, we're, we're trying to pick up all of that detail in the bottle. We also want to get rid of all of these like reflections. We want to keep it nice and clean. And then we want to, we want to highlight it with um, some edge lighting that's uh, soft and not too harsh to give the bottle some depth. How long did it take you to actually get good at this? Oh, I've been shooting wine bottles for probably 12 to 15 years. They haven't changed a lot. The, the, the way we light them, for me anyway, hasn't. Um, styles have changed a little bit, but, and it's all through modifiers. Which and, is easy. Yeah, and probably the biggest thing I've learned over time is to actually get as much as we can in camera because you, can spend, right you can spend a lot of time in post-production cleaning these up. The other thing to be aware of that, that saves in post-production is we use like air canisters to get rid of a lot of the dust and, and particles on here because they'll show up in a like a high resolution image yeah, um, fingerprints fingerprints yeah. so we'll shoot these with gloves, gloves and all those little things that will help reduce the time needed in post-production how long do you spend per bottle on editing them after you've shot the photos it, generally it varies from but probably you, it takes a while though it takes a long it time so it happen really quickly no i would say um to do something properly with dust removal and clean up the labels focus stacking and to get it perfect is a couple of hours per bottle per bottle per bottle Tell me about some, some bad photography looks like when you've seen on websites with people's photography for their sometimes 50, 60, 70, $100 bottle. The biggest thing that I see all the time is just not lit properly or it's just lit with harsh lights on either side and you can see all of the everything that's around. Um, sometimes you can see faces, roofs, um, um, <laughs> background, background everything in bottles. And the other thing, the other big thing that, that bothers me anyway is, um, is consistency through ranges where you'll, they'll have a couple of bottles shot really well and then some not so well or some, some that came, iPhone jobs. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. It, and, it, and it's a real mix of, yeah. um, of photos, whereas I think a, a site where everything's shot in the same way um, yeah. to a style guide, um, it, 
yeah, it creates a, a really high high end product and that can be reused across all of their marketing yeah. and platform. Tell me what finished file do they get when they get their photos done properly? We deliver um, a high resolution TIFF, which is uncompressed at 16 bit, and then we'll give them a high resolution JPEG and then we'll give them a web file and a low resolution web. Um, and the difference with those is um, a print color space versus a, an yeah. sRGB or web color space. So if it's going to go in a printed advertisement, it needs a certain different file. Correct. And yeah. we'll also shoot with color card so that with the file that we're giving the client is calibrated to that accurate. color card. So this color is accurate and all the editing is mm -hmm. done on calibrated screens. And also, what's the, what about the cutout version of the bottle so they can put it anywhere you know where it's yeah so all the all the bottles are cut out um what we call deep etched for a, for a proper deep etched file that we'll deliver to the client with absolutely no background as a png we will manually cut cut those bottles so out. it's cut out so they can literally put it in a picnic table you know digitally Correct. or they can put it on the beach or whatever so it's just that cut out yeah and the, and a proper cutter as well is done with a pen tool so you're getting all of the detail in the bottle and it's we're not just using a, a quick selection yeah it's a drawn so someone's hand drawing drawn. hand drawing yeah, yeah so everything's straight um, the other thing as well is is to make sure that the, the ratio of the bottle is straight so the lines the bottle itself is are perfectly straight and perpendicular yeah, linear. So, yeah yeah so there's no there's no distortion in yeah the, in so the it's photo. not like leaning this way or bigger at the top yeah and the other thing the and, and if there is a label that that doesn't um, reach the edge of the bottle or it's a circle or something else that is perfectly in the center of the bottle so when you do get your professional product photography shots done I think a lot of people would think that it's too expensive yeah, so the, the, the stuff I've been talking about here, while it, it could sound complex and difficult, um, there's an economy of scale with this. So when we're shooting a range of bottles for a client, um, that first bottle will take some time to set up, but then it's it's a copy and paste product, and that's the same with the retouching. So um, whether it's the shadows or the neck or the, the top, all of those highlights and all of that work is, um, is replicated across um, bottles and um, gets cheaper the more we shoot, and yeah. um, it doesn't need to cost a huge amount of money to get a really, really high quality product. Just having a chat to Corey Roberts from CR3, the principal photographer there, talking about the, the importance of getting this photography right. This is your brand. This is where you spend your life making and creating this great product. And to not get great photographs is just, to me, it's, it's just crazy, right? Yeah. So have a think about getting all your products shot properly, whether it be um, you know, it could be a soccer ball, it could be your clothes. It really makes a difference to get great photos done with someone like Corey from CR3. Thanks for watching.